Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Okay, Jared. Doing okay. How are you? Well, I'm not Florida State. Mm -hmm. This would be a completely different oh, type of a God. podcast if we were I, Florida State. I, I can't imagine a podcast we'd be doing. I... All, to all, all of the the fan based fan led podcast uh, in Florida State Nation right now, my heart's out to you guys. I don't know how you do it. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how you guys are gonna are gonna proceed with this one. I I, I don't know how. I don't know how. Um, couldn't have happened to a better school. I can think of. I can think of much worse. I can think of schools I dislike much worse. And and the curse of Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston ever do to you? Was was that your store he stole the crab legs from? What <laughs> what, what Jameis Winston ever do to you? Did did you get fired from doing security at that particular Publix? Uh, all right. Um, yeah, it's, it's not so, in a past life. It wasn't that long ago. You, so, you were, so, you were living this life. So, all right. Ohio so State so going last, to the Cotton Bowl. So that's the Ohio State news. Um, take and, on Missouri. Yeah. I tell you what, I was hoping for Ole Miss. I, it just seems more fun to me. Ole Miss just felt more fun. Um, I know a lot of people were calling or wanting Oregon in the Fiesta, which I get. That would have been fun, too. I think what maybe took some of the luster off of that is that we play Oregon in in conference next year. Um, so I feel like uh, Georgia wasn't going to happen, Zach. Um, once we knew Florida State got shafted, then at that point, we basically knew we basically knew it was going to be Georgia, Florida state and the orange like that. That was pretty much locked in at that point. Um, I was all set to play Louisville because I thought for sure that Florida state was going to get in and we were going to play Louisville uh, in the, uh, in the orange bowl. I, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty much set, but uh, obviously not. Yeah, I would have rather played Ole Miss. I think that would have been more fun. Uh, but, you know, we get we get Missouri. That should be fun. If they're a fun offensive football team. Um, it'll be a fun test for what I assume will be a lot of backups. Uh, a lot of Ohio State backups, especially especially on the defense, where I think there's a, a large contingent of that junior class who will probably not play. Um, but I don't know. I, I could be wrong about that. Uh, I'm just, I'm honestly just happy we didn't get Liberty because like there's no winning against Liberty. If you smash them into the ground, it's because you were supposed to, if you play them close or God forbid lose, then, you know, you're, you're Oklahoma, you're, you're Oklahoma versus Boise for the end of time. They said he expects everyone to play today. He's also having a team meeting tonight. Uh, so they hadn't had a team meeting yet, and but he expects everyone to play. Coach translation, no one has explicitly told him they're not playing yet. That That's all that means. Is Ohio State buying insurance policies? Uh, no, the players pl pay for their own insurance policies. Here's the thing, though. Whenever you hear about a player like paying for an insurance policy, like just in case they get hurt, they pretty much have to like, oh, like I think Willis McGay, he had an insurance policy when he had his knee obliterated against us in the national championship game. He didn't get to cash in on it because it didn't end his career. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's what that is. Um, so the, I, the, the thoughts these players have these insurance policies is like, it's only in like catastrophic situations. Yeah. 
but yeah. So, um, so, so this last, so this last weekend here, a lot of chaos, a lot of chaos happened. <laughs> the the last not weekend enough. of the uh, yeah, not enough. But there, sure enough, um, a lot of chaos and more, more so with the SEC championship game with Alabama taking down Georgia, which which caused the worst case scenario for this committee here. You had four and, spots and, 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 you, and six and, teams. And you and you can't yeah, you, and you can't you can't disagree with the 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 top two with um with Michigan and uh and Washington. Those are those are going to be the the top two. Yeah. No question about it. But man, fourth and 31 man, is the Jared, difference. It, no kidding. My god, they're, this, they're next. all of this plays out totally different if Auburn can guard a goddamn fourth and 31 play against Alabama. And one of those teams will be sanctioned. That's okay. There's zero chance in hell. Michigan wins the national title. I'll say it. Yeah. But man, number three and number four, this committee got it absolutely wrong. Like the word, this is the worst that they've ever ever put up um, the f- the final four they they started off great like the way the way they started nine years ago back in 2014 it was great um really liked what we saw from the from the first year of the playoff committee and and we're not biased it just seemed like that and, and it just and it just seemed like that it was just downhill from there and this is the last year with the four with four teams in yeah the worst year, the worst, the worst. Like, like, like how the hell, how the hell, Jared, can you leave out a undefeated power five conference champion out of the playoffs? Now, be, now, before you say, well, they're, they're without their, their starting quarterback. Why did they not rank them lower the week before? It's a good question. Like, like if it, if it, if it, if it was that big of a difference, like, oh, you're without your starting quarterback, we're going to rank you lower. Why not do that before? Where were they ranked last week? Fourth. They were fourth. Okay. Now you and can so, certainly and so make with Georgia, the argument so, that I'm just and I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I agree with you, Florida. It it, it should have been three Texas, four Florida State. I'm, I'm but I but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of devil's advocate. What you have to, I, if we're looking at resumes, Florida State barely beat a pretty middling Louisville team, and Bama beat arguably the best team in the country. If we're if we're, if we're oh, looking at resume, okay. If you're looking at items, that one week, if you're looking at that one week, but that's that's not what the committee does. They don't look at one week, or at least they're not supposed to. So they say. Well, I mean, talk to Georgia or Ohio State about one week. I it, that's yeah. Listen, it, it, and by the way, I'm, the I'm inconsistency tired, I'm tired. of this year's committee. I'm, it is. It was so bad and so inconsistent. It's God. <laughs> they 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 really messed up with this. They they really did. It's just bottom line. They they. I don't think there was whether, a, whether whether they want to whether they want to admit it or not. They they cannot have a they can't have a playoff without an SEC team. They they just can't. And and, and this this year this year proved it. That what a lot of people, a lot of people, thought for for years. They they can't they can't get a, they can't fathom not having an SEC team in the in the playoffs here. Right, and and and, and you can't and convince I think it's me. A very any, you can't convince me any other way. And I think it's a very interesting conversation as to whether or not that's valid or not. Um. Well, a one loss SEC champ. But that's the thing. Like there were five okay. teams. Inarguably five teams and honestly, arguably seven teams that deserved a playoff spot this year. But you only had four spots. 
but college football playoff has a contract with ESPN. SEC has a contract with ESPN, but the, the individual members of the committee don't. The committee aren't employed by, can't, aren't going to be bullied by the college football playoff committee. I, I don't buy the idea that the committee is doing the bidding of ESPN or ESPN has any power over them. I, that that's, I don't buy that one for one second. That doesn't make any sense. Um, if, if, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't buy that. I mean, and I would point out that the ACC is also contract with ESPN. You're acting as if Ohio State wasn't 40 yards from being number one. Uh, I think that wasn't directed at me. Um, I'm not talking to you, Jade. Yeah, I, 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 I got there. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, there were seven teams, seven teams who would have made the playoffs with their resumes in basically any other year. That's it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Georgia and Ohio State. You listen. If we're actually talking, here's what I don't. Here's what I can't stand. Well, deserving versus best. Deserving versus best. Deserving versus best. If we're just doing, if we're just throwing the four best teams in, I'm sorry. It's Michigan in no particular order. It's Michigan, Ohio State, uh, Bama, and in Georgia. Those are the four best teams and you're not going to convince me otherwise. Those yeah, are absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. the four best teams. Yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're going to go if you're going to go off that way. If we're just going to pretend yeah. like the results of the games don't matter. Then just put those four teams in. The results of the games have to matter. The wins and the losses have to matter. And We're not a best team. Yeah, we are. I, to, four, to quote, to quote what Austin teams. just yeah, I, I, to quote what Austin put, just I, said, we were forty yards away. We were six points and forty yards away from beating the number one team in the country, in their house. And if you're just thinking, well, we didn't pass the eye test or this or that, yeah, I got news for you. No one looked great this year. Bama struggled against some bad teams this year. Georgia struggled against some bad Auburn. teams this year. Michigan struggled against some bad teams this year. Oh, we hearing. Yeah, it's hmm. ever. No, no, no one's great this year, but there were a lot no. of teams. There was the, the amount of parity within like the top. 12, 13, 14 teams was insane this year. Like yeah. it, I have been to this point an anti 12 team playoff guy. I think it's too many teams and I hate it. And I, 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 I wanted no stay at four teams, M maybe go to six, maybe go to eight, but no, don't go to 12. That's too after this year. After this year. Yeah. Let's go 12. Yeah, let's go 12. It. Uh, screw it. I, I again, I, I think there was so much parody Like the fact that Oklahoma, Oklahoma or LSU could easily compete and potentially win the title this year. And those two teams wouldn't have made the 12 team playoff. LSU shouldn't. That's that's, that's not true. Yeah, LSU. Neither LSU. Oklahoma or LSU would have made a 12 team playoff and both of those teams in my opinion you putting together a good string of games could have won the national title never mind texas and washington ohio state penn state georgia ole miss michigan alabama oregon missouri florida state and as it turns out liberty which were the teams that would have made a 12 team playoff any given saturday right exactly i'll, I'll say Zach. i'll say zach um uh you said the LSU shouldn't be ranked. Um, they should, but not as high as they really are. Well, like at they're, least they're, they're not Tennessee. I mean, they, they are still ranked. 
Tennessee is somehow yeah, she's like right. LSU's like 13th. Like they should be lower. They should be lower than that. Like like Iowa, like 17th there. But what not, are your not thoughts gonna, not on the go, matchup go into that. with Missouri? I prefer playing Oregon. We talked about that at the bit of the top of the show. Ultimately, I think that they just didn't do Oregon um, because Ohio State and Oregon play next year. I think that's I think in my opinion, that's probably why. And also that I think there's a bit of um, Ohio State fatigue with the Fiesta Bowl. It just feels like we've gone there a lot. Um, so I don't know. Those are those are my thoughts on it. That's it. Those are my thoughts on it. Uh, Missouri's fun. Ole Miss would have been more fun, but screw it. We ball. Uh, final hey, rankings hey. placed Ohio State at seven, one spot behind Georgia, one spot ahead of Oregon. Missouri comes in at nine. Penn State finishes in the top 10. Ole Miss at 11. Oklahoma. And by the way, that's your dividing line. You take the top 12 teams. However, you get an auto bid if you're one of the top six ranked conference champions. I wonder if that rule will change before the start of next year with the dissolve, you know, the dissolving of the Pac-12. If they're going to adjust that, because I really don't feel like we need two group of five teams in the playoff. No, I don't. I don't think so either. All uh, Austin says all of the top 12 will be SEC or Big Ten teams next year, except one. They're Big Ten bound soon. Uh. You think FSU is Big Ten bound soon? I don't. I, t- I, I don't know about soon, but I think whatever that timeline is has definitely gone up. Well, I just don't. A lot. There, there are a few teams. There are a few teams out there. And when I say out there, I mean in the ACC. Who I think would be. And by the way, this is something Kyle and I have been talking about the big two, been talking about two conferences, you know, essentially the Big Ten and the SEC. We've been talking about the big two since 11 months, 11 months before USC and UCLA announced they were joining the Big Ten. For what it's worth. So, like, I think Kyle and I have been ahead of the curve on all of this. Just to throw that out there. One, the ACC is dead. And we've been saying that for years at this point. Two, to what Kyle was saying, I I have to wonder if this excel. Yo, no, the ACC is dead. The ACC is very dead. And I think this accelerates it. Clemson is going to go to the SEC. I, yeah. that, that, that I'm 100% on. Clemson's going to end up in the SEC. I'm 100% on that. Miami and FSU, see, Miami, FSU, Georgia Tech, um, and then uh, let's just leave it at those three for right now. Uh, Let's just leave it. I think those are teams that fit equally well in the Big Ten and the SEC. And I think they're maybe the only three teams that fit equally well do we want Miami? Absolutely. I I don't know why some people have this idea that Miami is some sort of party school, that it's maybe because it's in Miami. Maybe it's because of the reputation of the universe or of the football team specifically. But Miami is a very, very good school. And if you're wondering, yes, they are part of the ALU. ALU? That's not it. A, 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 what, why, oh, why, what, what's happening to my brain right now? A, a, U, a, a, U. I got there. I got there. Um, so I think, but anyway, I don't know. We're, we're not talking conference realignment right now, but I do think that the ACC is dead. I got to see Carter Finley the other day. Nice little stadium. It is. It is. Um, we're not talking about conference realignment, but I, I do think this will hasten the death of the ACC. Um, 
you know, again, this is some Kyle and I have been talking about for a very, very long time. Um, the ACC is going to is is the the writing's on the wall, in my opinion. The writing's absolutely on the wall, and the fact that they had a twelve team, five years tops. Um, I would have said, I think I have said the year 2029 in the past. Um, and the reason 2029 is because that's when the next like big 10 and maybe also sec, or at least in that area, uh, TV contracts come up. The ACC won't pack 12 die. It's going to big 12 die. If they're smart, they they end up merging. Because I think both of those conferences are going to get picked apart. So if they're smart, they end up merging. SEC TV deal runs through 2030. I think the Big Ten is either 2029 or 2030 as well. Um, so I think that's when you see the next big conference shift. So in the past, I have said, we just need to do an NFL style two super conferences. That's that's coming. Whether we need it or not, whether it's good for the sport or not, there are two different questions that we're not going to get into today. But that's what's happening. It is absolutely what's happening. 100% that's what happened. That's what's going to happen. It's just going to be the Big Ten versus the SEC. Yeah. Thanks. And here's the thing. Again, I have said 2029 and 2030 in the past. In my opinion, I I can't help but think that the you had an ACC champion. You had an ACC champion who was undefeated, get snubbed from the playoffs. The conference is dead. It's dead, it's dying, it's dead. <laughs> did did y'all talk about the little dick energy from UM when they found out they pulled Bama? Oh, we have not, but Kyle, did you see the video? No, I I missed it. I missed it. Someone so if someone has the video, please send it in the chat for Kyle. Um Kyle, watch it right now. Yes, Kyle needs to watch it right now if anyone has the link. Um, essentially, because, you know, ESPN has cameras everywhere. We got to see Michigan live react to pulling Bama in the playoff. And the groans in the room. That They've already lost. They're scared. Absolutely. It was more... It was worse than a golf clap. Well, there were definitely people in the room who like tried to recover the energy who were, who were trying to be like, yeah, yeah. Like so, so someone in the room remembered that they were, that there were cameras in there and the entire team just went, Oh, cause that's what happened. They've already lost. Oh, Kyle just watched the video. We can see him laughing at it. They've already lost. Michigan's already lost. They're scared. They pulled Bama and they're scared. That's it. They've already lost. And the fact that Michigan opened up as a two and a half point favorite, which last I checked is already down to one and a half points, is the freest money I've ever seen Vegas offer. Alabama 38, Michigan 23 feels right. I don't think Michigan scores that much. It was down to 1.5 within five minutes. Yeah. It did not say at 2.5 very long. <sighs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't know, Kyle. I, I think we're both of the opinion that Florida State got screwed. It, uh, it's it's the worst. And I know that you can go back to, what was it 2017 when Ohio State got, um, uh, got gypped as well? When when they should we have been in that as well. This is, this is this is um this is by far the worst. This is by far yeah, no, no. This is the worst like with Ohio worst. State, there were arguments to be made. 
fair arguments to be made. They were one of a few teams who deserved to be in, and y- you didn't get it, and it sucked. Florida State got screwed. Um, Florida State should have been three, and I know a lot of people will just say, well, Texas beat Bama, so Texas should have been at four. And I don't necessarily agree that it's that simple, although I certainly understand the argument. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I would say that the committee had three bad choices or three good choices. However, however you want to look at it, right? They had three good choices, um, but they, of those choices, they picked the worst one. Of those choices, they picked the worst one. And I, I don't know. It's, I'd be so pissed off if I was a Florida State fan right now. I, Kyle, I went and found the most crimson-y shirt I had. Seventh Sun Brewing, by the way, um, in case, uh, hey, Seventh Sun, sponsor us. This is the most Florida State coated shirt I had. I found it. I put it on. This is for Florida State. It's really more maroon, but but in these lights, it feels, it feels right. It feels right. Does the regular season play matter anymore? Well, if you're the if you're Florida State, we're really pretty much anybody who's not Alabama fans. The answer is it doesn't appear that way, and it more so even less starting next year as well. Does does the re- regular season play matter? Not not much, other than potentially home field advantage, depending on how how that all plays out for next year. Well, getting getting a buy is still huge. Yeah. Florida, Florida State defense showed up, though. Yeah. And that's one thing that that you I don't think anybody has really said. It was that I mean, Louisville's offense is no, no joke. I, I think Louisville can go up and down the field against most teams here <laughs> in Florida, in Florida, in Florida State held them they they held them down and i i was really impressed with florida state's defense here and the offense did just enough did what they need to do to to win the game like so sometimes sometimes you gotta you, you gotta get through those kind of games and just get that win i wonder if flipping quarterbacks, and so, and sometimes that, that's 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 a lot more difficult than it really is i think flipping quarterbacks I, was the wrong move i think it sent a bad message and I think that the guy um, who's who, if you don't remember Brock, what's his Brock Glenn? Yeah, he, he was concussed. Yeah, he wasn't going to be playing. Really? Yeah. Because didn't he go that's back? The, that's it. Didn't he go back in the game after he got concussed last week? He, the, the play he allegedly got the concussion on, he went back into the game. Yeah. So sure, yeah, he shouldn't have. So either they're lying and they're just trying to act like they didn't swap swap quarterbacks at the last second in order to try to save the kid's pride or whatever, or they put a concussed kid back in the game the week previous. One of those two things are true. I'm going to prefer to think that. I, I don't know what I prefer to think. <laughs> one, but one of those two things is true. Uh, but the kid who got put in sucked. Uh, I'll say it. Uh, he did not. He did not play well. Anyway, um, I mean, he was he was a true freshman, wasn't he? Mm, Pretty sure he was a true freshman. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he was committed to Ohio State for like a few months. Yeah. Um, then Ohio State got. Lincoln Kleinholz, which I'll I'll say it was an improvement. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's Florida State got screwed. I, I don't. Florida so I was State looking at bad. the AAU. I was looking at the AAU membership here. I don't even see Florida State on here. Florida State just missed. Um, they applied last year or whatever cycle they use, uh, and they they like just missed. And they fully expect to get back the next time they do. Is Clemson AAU? Hell no. Not even close. Administrative issues, like technically. Um, they, they were having staffing issues. 
and is UNC AAU. Yes, they are. Um, they're having staffing issues at Florida State from what I read, and I'm not going to get into it past that. Because that would move into things that are not relevant to this podcast and would get me in trouble. Um, but yeah, I know they're having staffing issues. I, I would I listen, I used to say Notre Dame was the one exception to the AAU rule. Well, guess what? Notre Dame's now in the AAU. Uh, so I get a new exception, and that one exception's Florida State. It's still a really damn good school. Uh the fact that they're not yet AAU doesn't bother me. Well, to the Big Ten, it probably does. But at the same I time, don't think, I don't think I don't think they pass on Florida. It's one thing. It's one thing to pass on Oklahoma because and I'm not saying Ohio State ever passed on Oklahoma. But it's one thing to pass Big on ten. Oklahoma Big because ten. they're not in the AAU because Oklahoma is not a good university. Florida State is still a good university. That uh, it's it's not like you're letting in WVU. Apologies to any WVU or Oklahoma alumni who might be listening, uh, but it, it's 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 not it's not that uh, Florida State is still a really really good school. I believe the Big Ten did, in fact, pass on OU. Not this recent cycle, but there were rumors uh, during the previous cycle that Oklahoma and Texas, um, but I those were all rumors, and I don't know if any of them are true or not, so we don't need to get yeah. into that. Anyway, we, we really don't need to be doing conference realignment talk right now, although it is literally one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, so I could just get lost in it and keep doing this, but we probably shouldn't. Um, or Berm, Berm, said, Berm said it best here. One thing that's consistent with the with the committee uh, discussions and decisions is that when you lose, sure matters a whole lot more than who you lost to. Um, I would, we, we wouldn't have this, we wouldn't have this discussion if Ohio State's loss, one loss was to Notre Dame. Well, yeah, because they would have won the big 10 if their one loss was Notre Dame. Okay. But that didn't, that didn't, that didn't seem to matter for Florida State undefeated. Yeah. And I, I we don't don't put me in a position to defend that because I, I'm not going to defend that. But the fact of the matter is, is that you still would have had like undefeated Michigan and undefeated well one loss Ohio State, but undefeated in conference Ohio State play, and in this scenario Ohio State wins. Why is this a convo? That's a, that's a that's a good question. The point is, is that I don't. I'm not saying it does or it doesn't. I'm not saying the when of it matters or doesn't matter. I'm saying I don't think this year proves that. I think the committee think had five conference champions and four spots and they chose wrong. I think they chose no, I, wrong. I, I complete. No, I, had five, I, I disagree. They had five I, I deserving think... conference champions and four spots. I definitely think that when you lose definitely does matter. It really does. Cause you look at a lot of teams who have that one loss. It's earlier in the year, early mid of the year. And it's rarely ever that they lost at the end of the year. There might've been a few exceptions, but most listen, of the time it's always early or mid of the listen, middle of I, the year. If I, that team has one loss. I'm not saying that's true or not true. I don't have the data in front of me to either confirm or dispute that what i am saying is that this year is not i love berm berm's literally one of my favorite people on the ohio state beat this year isn't proof of that they put in four conference champions they left out one conference champion who was fifth 
Berm is a G. Absolutely. I love Berm. Legitimately one of my favorite people on the beat. Was nice to me at a random, like, incredible, like, conversationally super cool to me when we happened to just, like, be sitting in the same area during a Friday Night Lights event. And this was back when the Sloopcast was really nothing, as opposed to the slightly above nothing that we are now. Let's switch Jared out with Berm. Berm, Berm couldn't afford the Sloopcast. He, he, he needs actual money. Um, point is, I adore Berm. So I'm not, no disrespect to him. This, this year is not proof of that whatsoever. Not at all. They had five conference champions and four slots to put them in. When any of these teams lost, doesn't matter. If Florida State still had Jordan Travis as their quarterback, I think that they're in the playoff. Maybe I'm wrong. We don't know. We don't have that counterfactual. Orm could afford to give the mods dental. No, he couldn't. Clearly a best four team Alabama lost by Arkansas to or lost by Texas lost by 10 to Texas beat Arkansas by three beat Auburn by three beat A&M by six Arkansas Auburn A&M have a combined record of 17 and nine and I'm telling you right now uh, 17 and 19 um yeah A&M is carrying a lot of water in the in that combined record too um Yeah, I, listen, I think it should have been Texas and Florida State or actually Florida State and Texas. Yep. That's fine. I just don't think the again, I don't think when any of these teams lost was some sort of huge deciding factor in any of this. Could I be wrong? Sure, but I I, I don't believe that. You know, I, 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 I really hope, I really hope Florida state somehow pulls out the upset beats Georgia and they just hang a national championship banner. I really, I really hope they, I do. would, I'd do it. I would, I would, I would, and, you know, do and, it. and I would think any, any person with a brain would acknowledge that be like, yeah. Yep, they they were they were I don't a, care if anyone acknowledges they're it. They're a national type they were a national champion. I don't care if anyone acknowledges or not. Listen, college football is built on tradition. There is no, and I mean no other sport. No other sport who is who embraces and honors its traditions like college football does. And there is no greater more consistent tradition in all of college football than claiming a national title whether anyone agrees with it or not there is literally no greater college football tradition every team every team in college football has some questionably claimed national titles hanging from their stadium every single one of them bama has a few themselves quite a quite a few we did an entire episode on this, by the way. Um, go find it. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to do your work for you. Um, I might link it down in the show notes if I remember. Will I remember? Eh. I want to claim one for twenty one and twenty two. I'm not stopping you, but you know, like the university needs to do it. Anything else here? You got anything else you want to talk about here? Let's claim 19 as well. Uh, I, I don't I don't know, guys, if we're if we're going to guys, if we're going to claim a modern Ohio State championship. It's 12. Yeah, it's 2012. I don't know what you guys are talking about. It's clearly 2012. We are undefeated. Come on now. Come on now. If we're going to claim a bullshit national title, 2012 is is the way to go. And would have played Notre Dame. I, I don't know if that's true. We, I think we could have got Florida State in that year because <laughs> we act because we weren't actually that good. I know Bama had a loss. I know. 
That's what I'm saying. We could have been Florida stated in, 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 I mean, there wasn't a playoff committee back then, but like we weren't actually all that good is the thing. And I think Bama would have creamed us or, well, okay, we wouldn't have played Bama, but you, you get my point. Would have been 13 and 0 conference champs. Uh, that's assuming we would have won the big 10, which we probably would have the, the big 10 championship game. That's what I'm saying. Like, we're going to, I mean, guys, I mean, let's just start a, claiming I mean, 2012. It was, it's fine. I mean, if it was Ohio State or, heck, even Penn State would have easily beaten Iowa. Ah, uh, tale as old, of time, as old as time. Easily beating <laughs> Iowa in the Big Ten Championship game. Doesn't yes. matter if it's Legends and Leaders or East and West or if they somehow get in after we do away with divisions next year. Kyle, here's what I want to talk about. More legit than our 64 claim and the 70 claim. Uh, yeah, I think this if 70 is the one I'm thinking about, that was a pretty. That that no, it's not a, not as bad as the one year that Alabama with three losses still claims it as a national title. Yeah, I got we did an entire episode on this. <laughs> I know we did an entire episode on this. Every team has some very questionable championship claims and some more than others. Bama has more <laughs> than a few. <laughs> our, our, was it 70? Is that the year it was? Is, um, was, was pretty questionable. It was a whole thing. There was a whole stretch there. Like, I want to say it was like, the mid sixties into the early seventies where the coaches poll wouldn't readjust, or maybe it was the AP. I don't remember, but I think it was the coaches poll wouldn't do another poll past the bowl games. So a bunch of teams would go on. And this was the case for Ohio state in 70 Ohio state would like went on and lost the Rose bowl, I think to USC, but because the coaches poll didn't do another vote after the bowls, they were Ohio State still finished number one, so they still claimed the title. And a bunch of teams did that. A bunch of teams did that. Didn't we lose the USC in the bowl? Yeah, 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 yeah. A bunch of teams did that. Kyle, let's. We got a little bit of time here. The power two. Mm hmm. This is how I this is what I think the com the college football playoffs will look like in. Mm, eight years. Eight years. I was going to say 2030. 2030. Sure. I, I feel like it's going to take a year or two to set it up. So let's say 2032. Which is nine years. This is what it's going to look like. You're going to have two conferences that matter. Uh, in my opinion... Those two conferences, let's call them the Big North and the Big South. Let's call them the Big Ten and the SEC. Just be honest. I think those two teams are going to leave the NCAA for football. Not totally, but for football, will leave the NCAA. And I think that they're just going to form their own, dare I say, semi-pro football their league. Own, their own subdivision it's not even a subdivision because you aren't in the NCAA anymore. Call it an amateur football league. Call it a semi-pro football league. And they're just going to play within themselves. That's it. They're just going to play. They're just going to play within. Ran through college question mark. I mean, Ran through like run through the colleges. Yes. I mean, not any different than you see now. It's just that the NCAA will no longer have any relationship to these colleges, footballs, football teams. What about scholarship notion? You can still do it. Why not? Schools can give out scholarships to whoever the hell they want. I well, I mean, it's not it's semi pro ish, which honestly isn't any different than it is right now. 
still do, still give guys scholarships. You guys are getting too hung up in the weeds of this. Point is, is that you then have, let's say, Kyle thinks it's eight. I think it's six, whatever. The top six or eight teams from each conference compete in a playoff within their conferences. So the best six or eight teams within the Big Ten will do a Big Ten tournament and the SEC will do the same thing with their top teams. And then at the end, the winners of each conference will play each other. And Ooh. that's your college football national champion. Yep. And you might be wondering, yep. Jared, what about the ACC and the Big 12? Well, I think that the Big 10 and the SEC will have poached the ever loving hell out of both of those conferences for all of their best schools at that point. Uh, the ACC and the Big 12 will hopefully, for their sake, formed and created something. But they're not going to be any teams you're really going to miss all that bad. And you might be wondering, Jared, what about the teams that don't get brought along? Because I, I think it's like 26 or 28 sized conferences. Like the Big Ten will have 26 or so teams and the sec will have 26 or so teams and they're just there's not going to be anyone you really miss all that bad still left over afterwards but what about them fuck them sorry sorry but fuck them i hope uc gets left behind hey, uc is absolutely getting left behind uh, that's a given tiered system like pro rel i the 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 pro rel thing has an episode kyle and i it's that episode's now very old um i would love it i don't think that's realistic um i wish it were i i i want that to happen mm -hmm. but I don't, I, that was kyle and i having fun that was kyle and i that wasn't a prediction that was a wish cast I think that I think promotion and relegation would be the absolute best thing that could happen to college football. But that would also require the most powerful rich schools to put themselves in a system that could see them be relegated. And they're just not going to sign up for that. When they could have an American style closed system league. Um, the promotion relegation thing, again, Kyle and I once did a whole episode on that. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think it'd be the best thing to ever happen to college football, but it's not going to happen. In-state schools become minor, minor league. Guys, it's already there. You, you, you see what's happening. For the transfer portal, right? These teams are already minor leagues. It's already happening. A quarterback, uh, DJ Uyunglele is leaving Oregon State after Oregon State totally revitalized his career. Why? Because Oregon State's not in a conference that matters anymore. Look at Indiana's O line. Well, that that that's because they fired their coach. That was that's that's a slightly different situation. But I mean, there are already quarter. I mean, look at the. Uh, I mean, there's tons of quarterbacks from small or like. I'm not even talking bad teams. I'm talking ACC teams. I'm talking Big 12 teams who are just straight up throwing themselves in the portal so they can go play for a team that might like we already have minor leagues. This is already the case we live in. All kind of deflectors, defectors from Notre Dame. 
yeah, Ohio State wants to talk to their center who's in the portal. But Kyle and I will be doing a whole thing on um, the portal and recruiting. That episode will be out on Thursday. Yep, yep. It'll be it'll definitely be portal talk. It might also be recruiting talk, but we're definitely going to be talking about at least the portal uh, on an episode that will be coming out on Thursday. Are we doing a bowl pick this year? Yes. We're doing the yes, bowl confidence poll once again this year. We're looking for an online resource to do it because doing it manually like we have the past few years uh, sucked. <laughs> it, it, it sucked a lot. Um, we are kind of rolling that, if I'm being honest, kind of on a. Um, an honesty basis, <laughs> like, hey, everyone, what's your scores? How you doing? Here, how you do with your season picks? Bad. Real bad. More, important, more importantly, Jared, between you and me, who won? Um, you, I'm sure. Has to be you. I was terrible in the slew picks this year. I mean. I, I wasn't all that great either. Yep, I beat you by two. Man, you, you finished strong. You, you Your last week, you got you got five out of seven. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I, I did nail this past week and my reasoning was good, too, for what it's worth. Like, I, I didn't just sort of backdoor into them like my like my reasoning and my predictions and the things I said actually turned out true, too. Um, I had a really good I had a really good sloop picks this past week. But, you know, Jay wins free swag. Jay does win free swag. You have to reach out, I think, to him, Kyle. Yes, I will. Make sure he knows about the 7071 store as well. Free t-shirt right, we'll for do. Jay. Free t-shirt. Right, I think that's it. I, Free t-shirt I think for cousin can... Jay. Jay cheated. Don't you dare question the honor of cousin Jay. How dare you, good sir. We tie? Who tie? Who tied? I don't know. I'm just reading the chat. Oh, guys, who would cheat? This is a Buckeye based server, not a Michigan based server. None of us would cheat. Shout, shout out to the uh, Missouri head coach whose name I can't remember. Um, when he was being interviewed during the college football playoff committee show. And of course, if you've already forgotten, they're, they're playing Ohio state uh, as they were wrapping up the interview, he goes, Hey, I got to go. Connor stallions is calling me. God bless the man. It was, a, it was a good joke. It was a good joke. I'm not even mad. It was a good joke. The Missouri head coach. It was a good joke. I'm not even mad. It's a good joke. All right. Um, Kyle, uh, uh, let me do the plugs first. Everyone, uh, Cousin Jay gets a free t-shirt, but none of the rest of y'all do. Sorry. Uh, but you can buy your t-shirt, and I believe you can, and, and check with uh, T Public to be sure, but I'm pretty sure you can still get those t-shirts for Christmas. Um. Our 7071 store, which is literally seven numerically 7071.thesloopcast.com. Uh, there's a bunch of just Ohio based apparel there. It's not really even merchandise, or it's not none of it, none of it screams podcast merch. It's just like Ohio based apparel. Uh, and you can find that at 7071.thesloopcast.com. Um, and then you can go to merch.thesloopcast.com where there that that is podcast merch. That is Sloopcast merchandise. Um, and you can check out both of those things at the addresses I already gave you. 7071, which is numerical once again. 7071.thesloopcast.com and merch.thesloopcast.com. Um, yeah. 
I buy my path here, get cheated by your Sloop Coin Casino on a daily basis. It's a casino. It's literally Matt. It if you're like Jared rigs it, it's it's it, Jared. Yes, it is rigged. It's a casino. It uses actual casino math. The casino games in the Sloopcast Casino use actual casino math. So yes, it's rigged. <laughs> It is rigged, but it's rigged in accordance to how actual casinos are rigged. I don't know what to tell you. It's a casino. It uses casino math. It is therefore rigged. Sorry. It's not an algorithm. It's a ratio. It's... Listen, I'm not going to explain how a roulette wheel works to you, but those two green slots are there to screw you. That's why they're there. Those green slots are there to screw you. And if you don't already know or understand that, then I don't know what to tell you. Got anything in Kyle's corner? Um... Since you went on a tangent there, I will go ahead and um, make it real quick here. So crew wins, crew wins, um, moving on to the MLS Cup. So if you're in Columbus this Saturday and you have some money, head on, head on over, head on over, um, support, support your local Columbus crew, taking on, uh, taking on L.A., for the MLS Cup to get that third star. Look, even even Chop Daddy says he's got to go. See, yes, he's, he's got to go. He got to go. He's got to go. To, he's he's hyped. Yeah. He's got to go. And, and both Buckeye basketball teams won uh, Sunday. Jared, the uh, um, women's beat Tennessee, and the Buckeyes uh, defeat your Jared Golden, Golden Gophers. Not my Gophers as well. Not my Gophers. <laughs> is PJ Fleck fired yet? Not yet. Okay. Are they going to wait till after signing day? We'll see. No, I think they would have done it by now. That's it. That, that's all I got. All right. That's it. That's all he's got. Tonight's ending music brought to you by a punk band called The Dopamines. One of my favorite Ohio based bands, The Dopamines. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, these are the dopamines.